CrossFit Open 24.2 is here. AMRAP for 20 minutes, 300 meter row, 10 deadlifts, 50 double unders, the barbell weight, males 83 kgs, uh, 185 pound, and ladies 56 kgs, which is 125 pounds. Um, first thing first that comes to my mind is if you are a part of the 6-4 Army, uh, Tuesday, the start of this week, we did an AMRAP for 12 minutes, 300 meter row, 15 chest bar, 10 deadlifts, and the deadlifts were much heavier um, by 40 or 80 pound per, per barbell. So with that in mind, I think there's some really good referencing points there just from having done something similar to this in the, in the beginning of the week. Uh, add on another eight minutes of time frame, of course, complexity grows uh, just from the time frame alone. Uh, but then I would say that the total workout has regressed in terms of uh, degree of difficulty because of the load and also the chest of bars having, having now been replaced with the double unders. Um, obviously this is one of the higher end of time frames that you'll get given as a workout in CrossFit, at least in the qualifying portions of workouts. So we generally see up to a 20 minute workout. Um, anything that's mixed modal, 20 minutes is a very, very long time. If you're out running, um, of course you can get up to two, three hours, fine. But doing something that's um, you know gymnastics, weightlifting, monostructural based, which is large in portion what we see here, um, you know that, that, that does give uh, the body systems some some kind of troubles. So what we have for today is we have a thorough uh, mobility and warm up, and um, I think that if you want to really extract as much as you can from this workout that your warm-up should be double the time of your workout time. Um, and that's from when you walk in, you get through your mobility, get through some blood flow, some activation. You should be around that 40 minute marker uh, for a 20 minute workout. This is gonna be constant and sustainable throughout the whole, the whole workout. We like to think of a pace that's our forever pace. However, when it's in a, in a workout, uh, like a qualifier as such, it's gonna be a forever pace that sits right on the threshold. Um, so the last round, obviously you're gonna be clock reading if you're in the, uh, the 19th minute, you're coming back to the rower, that's all that you're gonna have to left to do in the workout. Row as hard as you can. Um, if you know that you've got a minute 10 or minute 15, you might get to the deadlifts. Trust that you can just spend yourself on the rower and then get to the barbell, pull only a couple of reps. So those are the types of things that you're gonna be looking for in this workout. Sustainable paces throughout. Drip feed your energy almost. Um, I think a good tail sign will be at the halfway marker if you have paced it well enough. Um, and yeah, there's just so many, I mean, it, it's, it's a rather straightforward workout, but it could go wrong so many ways. And it could go wrong just by rowing your, your pace five seconds too fast per 500 meter split for the first three rounds. That alone is only gonna gain you nine seconds total of difference, but it's gonna cost you, uh, it might not even be nine seconds gain, it might only be six seconds gain, but it might cost you uh, a minute worth of time on the back end just because you, you've gone out too hot and it's not recoverable from. So the things that we're looking for in our mobility and all our plans are here. Um, rolling out the T-spine, kettlebell calf smash, and we're getting some good work through uh, the posterior chain and setting up our calves and our feet for the jumping mechanics. Um, hamstrings, glute activation, things like that. Um, pretty simple stuff, but obviously uh, needs to be done. Um, the blood flow. Now this is where I would say is a huge, huge, huge priority. I would say 10 minutes bare minimum. You're gonna pick a couple of machines. So obviously 10 minutes on a, on a rowing machine, you're gonna just get probably a little bit numb to and not enjoy it so much. You might wanna just retract and pull off of it. A bike is fine. So two minute, we've got here two full sets for a two minute bike into a three minute row. There's going to be no transition between the two movements, but it'll be 10 minutes continuous. Because that's two full sets, we want the second round or second set rather to be faster than the first set so we're going to build in pace think of starting something like 60 percent going right the way through to 80 maybe 90 percent uh, towards the end of that row doesn't have to be maximal effort because no at no point other than that last minute in the workout should you get to that maximal effort point um, the activation that we're seeing today we've got some banded face pulls we're setting up the scapula posterior chain there for pulling uh, on the rowing machine uh, you're going to be there for half or not more of the workout um, single leg dumbbell RDLs on each side, obviously we're getting some unilateral stability here uh, through the hamstring and um, setting up the posterior chain once more for the deadlifts. Single leg calf raises, they're going to be elevated, so we're just really priming the strength through the, uh, the bounding mechanics of the dumbbell unders, 30 seconds of a kettlebell on the back, good mornings, 
Hinge mechanics again, priming posterior chain, midline trunk area this time around into a static hold with the Superman hold. A lot of this stuff can just again become quite boring or um, monotonous but this is the type of workout that this is required for. I very, very highly suggest that you get through a thorough warm up uh, throughout the whole thing. And then the primer. I suggest doing one full round of the primer. Yes, it's going to take you two minutes or less. Uh, rest until you're completely fresh and then you're going to go again. In that, in that primer, also understand what the type of time frame it took you to do. Hopefully, you have a lot of referencing from the rowing data that you've been putting in the gym that you can understand or predetermine type of paces that you're going to hold on the row before you start. Now, a couple more notes just to, just to um, touch on before we leave. Um, pick a pace that's going to be consistent throughout the whole workout. Ideally, from first round to last round, we shouldn't see more than, say, a 5% drop off in time. Um, that's how fast or smooth you should be throughout the whole workout. At no point should you row so fast that you cannot immediately pick up the deadlift. If you row so fast that you get off the, the rower and you're breathing heavy and you take another five seconds before you start your deadlifts, you've rowed too fast. And if that happens to you inside of the first 10 minutes, take that as feedback. Slow down your row portion from there immediately. It doesn't have to be dramatic. You don't have to go from a 140 pace to a two minute 10 pace just to get yourself back into the game. But just incrementally, okay, five second blocks. It's not gonna be a whole lot of time over 300 meters, but it's gonna be a large difference in energy expenditure to hold that type of pacing. For example, every two seconds that you row in difference of time uh, between a 138 and a 140 split is only a 1.2 second difference of time completion at 300 meters. You can make that time up just by unstrapping your feet faster than what you had of if you hadn't uh, rowed that faster pace. So those are the things that to consider here. I like to think of uh, workouts like this, working off the ball, um, working like I'm not getting a rep per se, but I'm advancing my workout forward. How fast can I strap my feet and strap my feet out? How fast can I get from my double under back to my roller? And I think that that's the most important transition, just to touch on that, is the, uh, the finishing the double unders and going back to the rowing machine. A slow, a slow moving rower is faster than a row that's not moving at all. I don't mind if the transition from the row to the barbell isn't super fast because you have to do some work there. Uh, barbell to the double under, you don't want to get there so fast, make some mistakes, of course, get yourself under control. But from the, 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 the double under back to the rowing machine, that one specifically, I want us just to have a good 20 minutes control conscious thought of get back to the rower, get on my rower. It doesn't have to be a, pull, a hard pull, but just start. Just start getting some points on the board. If the barbell is less than 50% of your one rep max uh, deadlift, you should be looking at going unbroken throughout the whole workout. I think that's a good way for us just to determine or predetermine the type of rep schemes that we'll break it up in. Um, obviously, top 10% of quarterfinals, semifinals, games athletes, unbroken undoubtedly the whole way through and try not to make any mistakes on your double unders. Pretty simple. It's going to come down to what pace you pick on the rowing machine. For anyone that's in the type of 25% of the quarterfinals, so the bottom tier and below, and if this is about, you know, sitting on the 50% of your on max deadlift or your cardiovascular won't allow for you to just at the fourth round to hold unbroken there, there on, break it up from the beginning. Go something like 6-4, 5-5, It's all going to determine based on what percentage of deadlift that is for you. If it's between 60 and 70%, you can still get away with two sets. If it's between 70, 80%, then you're going to go with three sets potentially. Um, there's no floor plan for this workout, so uh, you know, of first initial glance, I think that the fastest transition and setup for the workout will be rower, parallel to rower barbell, so right beside you, you'll get off your rower, you'll basically step and turn into the, uh, the barbell, and then you'll step on the other side of the barbell, facing the opposite way for your double unders. You'll do your double unders, it'll be two step back over the barbell, straight into the rower, and off you go again. There shouldn't be a triangular set up. I think that's a couple more steps than what you would want to. And you just think if you're taking 1.2 second extra per step in transition, that's an extra two seconds less on the rowing monitor you would have to row per round. I want to row as slow as I can, but as fast as my score will allow me. So I'm going to try and make up that time in here so I can pull this down here. Um, I think that... Uh, 
that's basically it. I mean, in a nutshell, to summarize, keep your pacings consistent throughout. Choose a predetermined pace. You can figure that out again in your primer. Really, really, really emphasize your warm up. Um, the blood flow is extremely important here. You should be warming up for about double the time of this workout, so 40 minutes from start of rolling out to beginning the workout. Um, make no mistakes. Don't get frustrated. If you're getting frustrated, look, just take a quick breath, composure, get back into it. Anything can happen in this workout. I would say make sure you have a second double under rope just in case your first one uh, malfunctions for whatever reason. Just have one available. It always pays dividends to do that because what if you're 15 minutes in, your rope goes to um, shreds and then you're running off to try to find another rope. You immediately, I need to do a repeat. So just make sure you've got one on standby. I think that's always a, um, I think that's always a, a call for action in a workout like this. And um, don't overcomplicate it. 20 minutes is largely the, 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 the issue in the workout, the issue shouldn't come from one of the movements in the workout, but it will also be the time frame of the workout. So stay engaged, stay focused. Remember you've got one bullet. As soon as you go into the workout, you only get to shoot it once. Don't wanna do this workout again if we don't have to for whatever reason, if we don't make any mistakes, we can be proud of our efforts. Um, you should be able to see our rowing pace chart. Take a look at that, we're created for this workout specifically, 24.2, and you can, um, you can gauge the times and predetermine some of the paces that you might wish to hold throughout the whole workout. Hopefully this serves you well. Tag us in your, uh, your, your workout, share us in your stories, and we'll be sure to follow your journey in the, uh, the CrossFit Open. Good luck.